In the previous video, we looked at replicated backups in depth. In this video, we are going to cover file level restores. We will look at the requirements for file level restores and then we will look at the process to restore individual files using the Windows Server 2016 that I have installed. We are back in the VMware vSphere web client. We are looking at the vSphere data protection 6.1 appliance almost home page. This is the getting started page and that's the first tab. We've looked at the user interface uh, earlier. Uh, we're running this at uh, site.local, that's the SSO domain and it is running on the vCenter server that is running at the headquarters site. Now the one backup job that I have implemented here is the backup job that's called WinServe 16 backup job. I have a Windows Server 2016 preview that's actually running and I have decided to use that as a reasonably sized backup job to show you what can be done with file level restores. So that's the backup job as you can see uh, the last time it ran was uh, at this time and uh, it's been successful and it's going to run quite soon again. In order to do a file level uh, restore uh, the first thing we need to make sure is that we have some backups that have been completed. So when I look at the restore tab and I look at the Windows Server 16 virtual machine and I expand that we can see that there are four image backups that are available and the various times are there as well. Now obviously the retention period and the frequency of backups and so on is all uh, defined at the time when one creates the backup job which we have already seen. But the focus of this video segment is to uh, look at file level restores. So having made sure that we have some images already there, backup images there, we then have to log in into the actual virtual machine that's running. So we have to log in into the Windows Server 2016 machine. So I have logged in into the Windows Server 2016 uh, machine. I have a remote desktop connection to 192.168.0.222.222 being uh, IP address of the virtual machine. Now in order to get to the file level restore, what one has to do is to browse to the address of the VDP. So the data protection appliance address is 192.168.0.60. You have to browse to port 8543 in the same way that we browsed to this port but instead did a VDP configure when we were configuring the data protection appliance. In this case we go to FLR for file level restore and at this URL we find the vSphere data protection restore client. So I'm now logged in into the Windows Server and I have just browsed to the data protection file level restore client. I key in my local credentials, local credentials being the credentials for the Windows Server. So administrator and I'm going to just click on advanced login. Apart from the local credentials which allows me to look at the backups and then look at the files that are available within those backups for this virtual machine. I can in addition if I do the advanced login enter my vCenter credentials and this way I can have access to all the backups basically that are available through the data protection appliance. At this point we just need to do a basic login. We have no other backups except from this virtual machine but if you did have other backups and you needed to bring in files from somewhere else that's how you would actually do that. But we're going to keep it uh, straightforward to illustrate the point how this is done. I will now log in. It's authenticating me. After logging in, it goes through all the various restore points that are available. So we saw four backups, uh, image level backups, when we looked at this through the data protection appliance user interface. It sees the same restore points in this manner. What we need to do now is to select one of these restore points. So I've selected the restore point and then I click on the mount button. What the mount button does is to basically mount that file system so that one can now then browse those files. So I click on one of those restore points and I click on mount and it says mounting. So it took a few minutes for that backup to be mounted. Obviously it looked at the entire VMDK, parsed uh, the whole structure, took out the individual files and made it available here in this file browser. So this works very similar to what we know. I expand that 
and it's going to load all the files that are available under it. So the next level down is the first uh, disk. I expand that and we should now get our folders. So you can see if I look at double click on users, go into the administrator user, I can then uh, look at the desktop. And uh, as you can see, I have a test file for file level uh, restore, which is called restore.txt. So I click on that. And then once that's done, I go to the bottom right of the screen and click on restore selected files. And it's going to the process. I have to specify a destination folder on my login VM. Let's look at uh, the C drive. When that opens up, I expand the users folder. I then expand administrator, desktop. I select the desktop and I click on restore. Are you sure you want to initiate this restore job? If you selected many files or a set of files of large size, it may take a long time to complete well. The idea is to illustrate this so the restore has been initiated. There's a button here, monitor restores. We click on that and uh, as you can see there is a restore in uh, progress for that file. It's an empty file actually but it does take uh, you know some time because uh, there's a lot of data to uh, go through on parse as well as uh, the amount of storage uh, that I have and the speed of storage is not exactly enterprise class. So this is exactly how one does a, a restore, a file restore pretty uh, intuitive and straightforward. I mean the key is that you have to go inside that virtual machine, log in there and then uh, browse to this URL which is the VDP URL at port 8543 and file level restore and from then on it's uh, quite uh, intuitive as to what needs to be done. Of course this works for uh, Linux as well. Uh, in order to use I believe uh, there are some constraints in order to use uh, ext4 file systems and LVM file systems uh, there is an external proxy is necessary for uh, doing that uh, backup that's pretty easy to set up as part of the VDP implementation uh, once you in install the VDP you can then uh, specify uh, external proxies to run on each individual server that takes care of that so in this case I showed it to you in uh, Windows this is a uh, Windows Server 2016 so it does work uh, very well for the latest uh, incarnation of uh, the, of the Windows Server a few minutes later since we were monitoring the restores the system came back with the success code here so we're in good shape our file has been restored as you can see this is uh, extremely powerful because if you take those uh, image level backups at different points in time uh, you're able to mount any one of those into a file system and then browse through the file system and pick and choose the files that you actually need to restore extremely powerful very very useful and uh, user friendly in the next video we will look at the process of backing up and restoring platform services controllers. I look forward to seeing you on that next video.